Question number nine. The arm of a crane at a construction site is 15 meter long. So length of the uh, arm is 15 meter. So distance. This is the construction. This is the crane. So crane is used to lift object to uh, the top of a building. So this is the arm of the crane, and its length is 15 meters. This distance from the top to the bottom, it is 15 meters. And it makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. So the arm of the crane makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. What is the magnitude of the maximum torque the crane can withstand if the maximum load crane can handle is 450 newtons? So the maximum load, load is suspended from the top of the crane. We are going to locate the load here. So this load will apply a force to the top of the crane and produce a torque. So we are going to calculate this torque. So uh, before that we should find the angle between the distance, this is the distance, and the force. Uh, the given angle is not uh, the angle between the distance and the given angle is the angle the crane arm makes with the horizontal. For that we should calculate this angle. Uh, this is the right angle triangle. Angles are 9 and 180. So if it is 90, some of these two angles must be 90. So for that reason, the angle between the distance and the force and this angle must be equal to 70 degrees. If it is 70, now we can calculate the torque by using the equation, torque equation, F T sine theta. F is the gravitational force, which is given as 450 Newton, so it is 450 Newton. D is the distance from uh, the application point of the force to the axis of rotation, which is D. It is equal to 15 meter. An angle between the distance and the force is equal to uh, 70 degrees. So then simply write the given into the equation, force, distance, and angle, and calculate it. You will get a result which is equal to 6,342 Newton meter. In part B, it's asked, what is the maximum load for this crane at an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal? This time, uh, this, crane, this uh, crane can handle a maximum torque of this, this number. For that reason, we are going to, this we are going to use this number for calculating torque is equal to F D sine theta for this one. The same torque we are going to substitute for a second case. But angle has changed. It was 20 degree, but now it is 40 degree. If this is 40, uh, theta becomes 50 because uh, uh, 90 minus 40 is 50, which is this angle, angle between distance and the force. Then this is the torque, maximum torque this can, uh, crane can handle. We will calculate the maximum load this, uh, this crane can handle at this angle. Angle is 50 degrees. We are going to write it here. And you can calculate Fg by 552. Question number 21. It says two solid uniform, two uniform solid disks of equal radii roll down an incline without slipping. The first disc has twice the mass of the second disc. How much torque was exerted on the first disc compared with the amount exerted on the second disc? Now, the discs are uh, rolling down because of the gravitational force. This gravitational force produces a torque about this point, produces a torque. So if you double the mass, Gravitational force also doubles. Increasing gravitational force also, on doubling the gravitational also doubles the torque. For that reason, the first disc has twice the mass of the second one, so the, the first disc will have the twice the torque of the second one. So torque one will be equal to two times torque of the second one because Fg1 is two times greater than Fg2 because mass 1 is twice mass of the second one. Next question, question number 22. It's uh, saying that a 3 kilogram solid cylinder has a radius of 0.80 meter. So mass of the cylinder is 30 kilogram, uh, has a radius of 
0.18 meter. If the cylinder accelerates, this is the acceleration, but what kind of acceleration is this? It is the translation, sorry, angle acceleration. Uh, accelerates 2.3 times 10 to the power of minus 2 radian per second square as it rotates about an axis to its center. So how large is the torque acting on the cylinder? So angular acceleration is given, torque is uh, wanted. So we know that torque is equal to moment inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. To calculate a, a torque, we, we, we have the angular acceleration, we can write it there. However, we should first calculate what is the moment inertia. It is the solid cylinder about this metric uh, axis. For that reason, it has a moment inertia 1 over 2 mv mr squared. First, we should calculate the moment inertia. So, 1 over 2 m is a 30 kilogram, so 30 kilogram. Radius of the cylinder is 0 0.18, open squared. So, moment inertia of this uh, cylinder, solid cylinder is 0 0.49 kilogram meter squared. Now, we can calculate the torque. Uh, torque is equal to I times alpha. I is, we just calculated 0 0.49. Moment, uh, it is the angular acceleration is 2.3 times 10 to the power minus 2. So when you multiply them, you are going to get the result as 1.13 times 10 to the power minus 2 newton meter. So this is the torque uh, acting on the cylinder. All right, question number 23, page 56. At 350 kg merry-go-round, so mass of the merry-go-round is 350 kg, in the shape of horizontal disc, so it is a disc, with a radius of 1.5 meter, 1.5 is set in motion by wrapping a rope around the rim of the disc and pulling on the rope. So let's draw the disc, this is the disc. So uh, a rope is wound around the disc and by pulling the rope, so we should apply a force. We are how large a torque would have been exerted to bring the merry-go-round from rest. From rest means initial angular speed is zero to an angular speed of 3.14 radian per second. So final angular speed is 3.14 radian per second in a time interval delta t two seconds. So to calculate the torque again, we need to know what uh, the angular acceleration is and what moment inertia is so moment inertia of a disc is uh, 1 over 2 mr squared we know that first we calculate moment inertia 1 over 2 mass is given 350 uh, radius is given as 1.5 so when you do this calculation you are going to calculate the moment inertia of the disc as 394 kilogram meter square also we need to know acceleration because we know the what final angular speed is and what initial angular speed is, so we can calculate acceleration because we also know time. So, final is 3.14, 3.14. Initial angular speed is 0, 0. So, delta t is equal to 2, so it is 2. So, from this part, you can get the uh, angular acceleration as 1.57 radian per second square. Now, we know what angular acceleration is and we know what moon inertia is. Then, simply apply this equation, I times alpha. I is, we just calculated, 349. Uh, alpha, which is angular acceleration, is 1.57. So when we multiply them, you are going to get an answer, 618.69 uh, meters. Let's check the next question. Next question says that, is the angular momentum always conserved? Explain. No, angular momentum is only conserved when the net torque acting on the object is zero. If no external net torque or no external net torque x on the object, so angular momentum is conserved. So is it possible for an ice skater to change her rotational speed? Again, rotational speed is angular speed. Without any external torque, explain. Yes, it is possible because angular momentum is equal to moment inertia multiplied by angular speed. So if you decrease the moment inertia of your body, you can increase the angular speed and rotational speed because angular momentum is conserved constant. If no external torque, angular momentum is constant. By, by decreasing the moment inertia of your body, you can increase the rotational speed or angular speed. How can you uh, increase, decrease the moment inertia of your body? By closing your arms and, or by uh, closing your body to the axis of your rotation of your body. So, another next one. Ice skaters use the conservation of angular momentum to produce high-speed spins when they bring their arms close to rotational axis. 
Imagine that the skater moves her arm inward, carrying the moment inertia in half. Then the moment inertia is decreases by one one by two. Therefore, doubling the angular speed is. We know that if moment inertia, dec moment inertia decreases by two, so angular speed must increase by two to get the same amount of uh, angular momentum. Therefore, doubling the angular speed. If we consider the rotational kinetic energy, we see that the energy is doubled in this situation. Yani, Rotational kinetic energy, remember kinetic energy rotational is equal to 1 over 2 i omega squared. In this case, 1 over 2 i, i is i over 2, it becomes omega is 2 omega, so square of them, it becomes 2 times 1 over 2 i omega squared. So it is twice of the first case. So does angular momentum cons is cons conserved, but kinetic energy is not, as you see kinetic energy doubles. Where does this extra rotation energy come from? When the uh, ice skater brings his arm closer to his uh, extra rotation, he does work. And this work done on the body is converted to, to kinetic energy. Normally, this is the subtitle of the 11th class. Uh, remember, if a work is done on a system, this work is conver uh, converted to uh, kinetic energy. So, next question is the question number 29. It says that, a solid ball starts at a height of 3 meters and rolls down a 20 meters, 20 degrees swell. A solid disk and a ring start at the same time and the same height. Both the ring and the disk have the same mass, radius as the wall. And all they are identical in mass and radius and height. What is different? Only their shape is different. Shape, uh, their shape is diff are different. Shapes are different. So which of the two objects will win the race? To the bottom if all rolls without slipping so we know that um, if an object is released from the top of an inclined plane so if this is the inclined plane rolls from here to there at the bottom of the inclined plane we can get the spirit by this equation 2 gh divided by c plus 1 right here c is the we set the coefficient of moment inertia for example for solid ball this coefficient is 2 or 5 for solid disk it is 1 over 2, for ring it is 1. So then, if you want this speed to be greater, you should make C smallest. So which one is smallest? Of course, solid ball is the smallest. So solid ball will have the greatest speed at the bottom of the inclined plane. Then, solid disk, and the last one is the solid ring. Question number 30. A 35 kilogram bowling ball with a radius of 3, 13 centimeters starts from rest. So, uh, mass of the bowling ball is 35 kilogram, radius of the bowling ball is 13 centimeters, which is 0.13 meters. Start from rest, which means initial uh, speed at the top is 0. So, find the uh, head start from rest at the top of an inclined, inclined 3.5 meter in height. So, h is equal to 3.5 meters so we record it here so find the translational speed which means vt at the uh, af uh, translational speed of the bowling ball after it has rolled to the bottom of the incline so right there what is the translational speed we are going to find it so to calculate the translation speed in fact we have a shortcut equation remember vt is equal to root of 2gh plus C plus 1. C is, it is because the bowling ball, bowling ball is a solid sphere. C for solid sphere is 2 over 5. And you know what G is, what H is. Simply you can write them and you can find this. But this is uh, just a shortcut. But physically what is happening here, at the top of the inclined plane, the system or the ball has only mechanical energy, which is potential energy because it is not moving so it has at a height at a height h 3.5 meters so it has only potential energy at the at the top of the incline but at the bottom this uh, potential energy is converted completely to mechanical uh, kinetic energy one of them is rotational kinetic energy the other one is translational kinetic energy so when we add them we will find energy at the bottom so what is the moment inertia for a solid ball it is 2 over 5 mr squared 
So uh, then here has two equ two equations for speed. One of them is translation speed, one of them angular speed. I'm going to convert angular speed to translation speed because translation speed is asking the question. So what is the uh, how can we write the relation between the angular speed and translation speed? Because we know that angular speed is equal to translation speed divided by r. For that is I'm going to write here v over r because it is square. It will be v squared over r squared plus kinetic energy one over two mv squared. So as you see, r squared and r squared cancelled, two and two cancelled. So energy at the bottom is one over five. Here is one over five m v squared, one over two m v squared plus kinetic energy one over two m v squared. So when you add them, you will find seven over ten m v squared. This is the total mechanical energy, which is the completely kinetic energy at the bottom. This is the total mechanical energy at the top, which is completely potential energy. So these two energies must be equal to each other. We are going to make them equal and we will find what the speed is at the bottom. This is the physical way, but by using this shortcut, we can easily calculate what the translational, uh, kinetic, uh, translational speed is. 2GH, H is 3.5, C is 2 over 5, which is solid sphere. Remember, solid sphere is a moment inertia, 2 over 5, uh, MR squared. So we say this is the C. A very similar question is next one, 2 to 1. It says, a solid uh, 240 newton ball with a radius of 0.2 meter, so radius is 0.2 meter, rolls 6 meter down ramp. When it says 6 meter down ramp, we are going to understand it is not height. It is the length of the path that the ball travels, yani L. It is 6 meter. And the inclination angle is angle is 37 degrees. So this is 37 degrees. Why all these are given? This is the 6 meter to calculate the height. Height always calculate by uh, hypotenuse multiplied by angle. So h times sine 37 is h. Uh, 6 times sine 37 is h. Then h becomes uh, 3.6 when you multiply them. So h is 3.6 meter. So now, uh, briefly, you can use the uh, circular equation, which is equal to 2gh divided by c plus 1, because it is a solid ball, yani c is 2 over 5. And then you can simply write it there. 2gh g is 9.81, h is 3.6 meter. c is equal to 2 over 5 plus 1. When you do this calculation, you are going to get the speed as 7.1. But in the question, it's asking the angular speed. So can we calculate angular speed? Yes, we can. Because this is the relation between the uh, angular speed and translational speed. So translational speed or tan tan uh, tangential speed, V omega is equal to tangential speed divided by R. Tangential speed is 7.1 meter per second. Uh, R is given as 0.2 for the solid balls. And when you divide them, you are going to get the answer as 35 35.25 radian per second. Question number 32. Two spheres look identical and have the same mass. One is hollow, which means the uh, inside is empty. The other one is solid. Which method would determine which, of, which is which? They look identical and the same mass. So by measuring their mass, uh, so drop them from the same height, they will hit the ground with the same speed. Weight them on the scale, they are equal because they have the same mass. But if we roll them on an incline, solid sphere will move faster because it has smaller moment inertia. Remember, V is equal to 2GH divided by C plus 1. Because they are all related from the same, released from the same height, speed only depends on C. So which one is smaller, C? Of course, solid sphere. Solid sphere has smaller C, so greater speed. For that, is in solid sphere will uh, win the race and you are going to understand which one is solid which one is hollow next question question number 33 it says a bucket filled with water has a mass of 75 kilogram and is attached to a rope that is wound around a cylinder with a radius of 0 0.075 meters so mass of the uh, water is 75 kilogram so of course this uh, mass produces uh, some torque uh, so then 
A crank uh, with a turning radius of 0.25 meters is attached to the end of the cylinder. What minimum force directed perpendicular to the crank handle is required to raise the bucket? Now, bucket is this is the picture. This is the uh, cylinder. Around the cylinder, as you see, the rope is wound, and one end of the from the rope, the bucket is connected. Inside this bucket, there is the water. This bucket is 75 kilogram this 75 gram applies a force which is equal to 75 multiplied by 9.81 so this is the fg this fg can be calculated with multiplication as 736 newton the force applied by this uh, bucket is 736 newton so this buck this uh, force produce some torque about this axis of rotation which is distance is small r which is the radius of the cylinder so also there is another force we applied by hand uh, but we applied the force to a crank this crank has a radius of 0.25 this is the applied force we want to find this applied force this applied force produce a torque let's say clockwise in this case bucket produce a force in uh, torque in counterclockwise so we are going to calculate them one by one so this is the uh, torque uh, produced by the bucket this is the weight of the bucket this is the distance to extra rotation that distance which is equal to small r 0.075 so 55.2 newton is the for the torque produced by the bucket then let's calculate the torque for the uh, produced by the, our hand it is negative because uh, if one of them is positive the other one is negative to make them zero because uh, we are going to make them zero F minimum multiplied by distance to x of rotation is equal to 0.25. So then add these two, 55.2, negative 0.25 times F minimum is equal to 0. From this, you are going to get the minimum force as 221 Newton to lift the back, uh, bucket uh, from the uh, from the, uh, down, down to the up. If the torque required, question number 34, if the torque required to loosen a nut that holds a wheel on a car has a magnitude of 58 newton meter, what force must be exerted on the end of 0.25 meter length range to loosen the nut when angle is 56 degrees? So to uh, loosen the nut, we are using this range, but this angle is not 90 now, it is given as 56. Distance is given as 0.35. Torque, produce torque also given. So we will find the force. F decentered is your angle. Force is equal to then. Take this decentered to other side as division. So force becomes torque divided by this sine theta. Torque is 58. D is 0.35 sine uh, 56. When you do this calculation, you will find the force as 200 Newton. So next question is. Uh, uh, about a screwdriver so it says that a 23 centimeter screwdriver is used to pry open a can of paint so it is length of the screwdriver is 23 meter, centimeter if the axis of rotation is 2 centimeter from the end of the screwdriver blade now this is the screwdriver this is the blade so that distance is 2 centimeter in this case, if total distance is 23, that part must be equal to 21 because total is 23. This is the axis of rotation. Then you are going to open this uh, lid. So a force of 84 Newton is exerted at the end of the screwdriver handle. Right here you apply a force in your hand. It is 84 Newton. This force is equal to 84 Newton. So what force is applied to the lid? Right here. What is the force applied on the lid? Question is this. So the screw bl uh, driver blade applies a force on the lid. Lid gives reaction down on the blade. So if I calculate the reaction force, I can also I also um, calculate the force acting on the lid. So just calculate this one. Use the uh, the trans rotation equilibrium because this force produces a clock counterclockwise torque. That one produces a clockwise torque. One by one, calculate them. Uh, positive torque produced uh, 84.3 multiplied by distance 21 centimeter which is equal to 0.21 so this is the torque produced by your hand so then 
Tork produced by the reaction force from the lead to the blade is negative fr. We will find this reaction force multiplied by distance to the axis of rotation, 2 cm. So when you add them, net torque is equal to 0 because 17.7 .7 negative 0.02 times fr which is reaction force so we are going to calculate the reaction force as 885 newton so then if the reaction force on the blade is this blade also applying an action force to the lid try to open the uh, lid of the can so question number 36 O at 0.1 kilogram meters thick when it says meters thick you are going to understand and um, one meter long stick if this is zero so then uh, that part will be under centimeter so 0.1 meter kilo, over one kilogram which means from the center which is the 50 centimeter we are going to draw 0.1 kilogram because it's the mass of the stick supported at its four centimeter mark from the four centimeter mark it is supported by a string to the ceiling so right here is the ceiling a 0.7 kilogram mass hang vertically from 5 centimeter mark from 5 centimeter you are going to suspend at 0.7 kilogram uh, object or mass another mass we don't know is attached somewhere where to uh, attach we don't know still but we know that another mass is suspended from this uh, stick to keep it horizontal yeah and there is a rotational equilibrium if the force applied by the string right on the string is 19.6 newton determine the value of the unknown mass the value of the unknown mass so now to determine it we can use the translational equilibrium because we know what is the weight of 0.7 kilogram we can calculate it by multiplying times 9.81 it is weight of the 0.7 kilogram also, you can calculate the weight of 0.1 kilogram, which is equal to 0.98. And the force Ft is given. So, you can calculate the weight of the unknown mass, which is we are going to calculate later. So, which is 11.75, you will calculate it. You can calculate this. So, we are going to use what? The translational equilibrium. Sum of the force acting on the stick must be equal to zero. So, the first force is... 19.6 which is applied upward positive second force is 6.87 it is downward because negative third force is 0.98 it is also downward because of negative fourth one we don't know how much fg so is equal to zero so then from here we can get fg as 11.75 newton as you see we wrote it here 11.75 corresponds to a mass 1.2 kilogram how can you calculate if you divide this 11.75 by 9.81 you will get 1.2 kilogram which is that mass now this is the answer of part a so the point where the mass attached to string so you could calculate what x is this time we are going to use the apply, apply the rotational equilibrium this produce a counterclockwise this produces a clockwise torque this also produces a clockwise torque okay so now let's uh, calculate the torque one of them positive torque so force is 6.87 multiplied by distance to axis of rotation is from 5 to 40 it is 35 centimeter and 0.35 second force is 0.98 which is negative torque Produces because according to this it try to rotate in clockwise negative torque so what is the force 0.98 what is the distance to the axis of rotation from 50 to 40 it is all 10 centimeter 0.1 meter third one has a force 11.75 it is it produces a negative torque yes negative torque and distance we don't know we will calculate we say x sum of all these torques must be equal to zero according to rotation equilibrium then you calculate x as 0 0.19 196 meters so 19.6 centimeters from this point to there it is all 19.6 centimeters so this point is 40 40 plus 19.6 it becomes uh, 59.6 uh, centimeters so it must be uh, suspended from 59.6 centimeters
it says a uh, 0.02 meter diameter coil. So this is the diameter. So radius is 0.01 meter. Rolls have a 15 degrees inclined plane. So this angle is 15 degrees. 15 degrees inclined plane. The coil starts with an initial angular speed of 0.45 reading per second and rolls in a straight line without slipping. How much vertical distance does it gain? So we are going to roll it from the bottom. It will move to a height. So what is this height? Question is this calculate. So uh, this is the given is the angular speed, 45 reading per second. So I can use this equation, but in this equation, tangential speed is given. So, but I can calculate tangential speed from this equation. Angular speed multiplied by radius of the coil. So angular speed is 45, radius of the coil is 0.01. So when you multiply them, you are going to get the tangential speed as 0.45 meter per second. So what about the CV also we need to see? It is a disk, coil in a disk, 1 over 2 mi squared. So, so is equal, C is equal to 1 over 2. So V is given, age is asked, G and C are known. So you should calculate age. To do that, first square both sides of the equation. This square is 2GH divided by C plus 1. Then cross multiply them. Uh, what happens in this case? 2GH is equal to V squared times C plus 1. Then H is equal to C, V squared C plus 1 divided by 2G. So then uh, V is, we just called it 0 0.75. 0 0.45 square of this number. C is 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5 plus 1, divided by 2G, 2 times 9.81. So you can calculate the maximum height the coin can rise is 0 0.015 meter, which is equal to nearly 1.5 centimeter. Question number 38. A 12 kilogram mass is attached to a cord that is wrapped around a wheel with a radius of 10 centimeters as shown in figure. This is the figure. This is a wheel. Uh, uh, cord is a mass is uh, connected to this wheel by a uh, rope wrapped around the wheel. This is the object. The acceleration of the mass is down, the frictionless incline is measured 2 meters per second square. So this acceleration is equal to 2 meters per second square. Also, we wrote acceleration right there, which is tangential acceleration. So mass of the object is given the question as 12 kilograms, so it's the mass of the object. Uh, wheel, this wheel has a radius of 0.1 meter. It's also 10 centimeters in the question, giving 0.1 meter. So the acceleration is 2. Assuming the axle and the wheel to be frictionless, Determine the force in the drop. To calculate, to find the force in the drop, which is normally we say it's tension, so we should apply the second law of motion. So tension always acts in the direction of the drop, and it has a pair. If pulling the object up, the same force will have a reaction on the wheel. It is also FT. These two are equal forces in equally magnitude, opposite in direction, and acts on different side objects because they are action reaction forces. Another force acting on the object is FG. This FG is acting downward, acting downward. Uh, and third force is FM, which is the normal force. We are not going to use the normal force, we know that, but it's perpendicular to the surface. This FG has two components. One component of the FG is always, this is the perpendicular component surface FG cosine theta. Also, we are not going to use this. Another component is the component parallel to the surface in the direction of the motion, FG sine theta. So we are going to use this force. Because acceleration uh, is in the same direction of this force, Fg sine theta. Fg sine theta must be greater than Fg. So now apply the second condition of equilibrium. Net force acting the object must be equal to mass times acceleration. Net force is what? This is the, the force in the direction of acceleration, so Fg sine theta. But Fg is in the opposite direction. Must be equal to mass times acceleration. So 
How can we calculate FG? Mass multiplied by gravitational acceleration. So what is sine theta? Sine 37. Negative FT, we will find this. Mass is 12 kilogram. And acceleration is 2 meter per second. It is given squared. It is given in the question. So when you did this calculation, you calculate FT as 47 Newton. This FT is the tension in the cord, acts on this object, also acts on the uh, wheel. Now, part B. Calculate the moment inertia of the wheel. If the object is moving with an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, the wheel also rotating with this same uh, tangential acceleration. Yeah, and tangential acceleration of the wheel will be, will have the same acceleration. If tangential acceleration is equal to r times alpha, I can calculate the angle of acceleration of the wheel. Tangential acceleration is 2, which is the acceleration of the object. So they are equal because they are connected to each other. Radius of the wheel is 0.1, it's given in the question. Calculate the angle of acceleration of the wheel, which is equal to 200 radian per second square. Why did we calculate it? Because to calculate torque, we need angle acceleration. So torque can be calculated by two ways. One of them is force multiplied by distance. So we know what force is. We just calculated 47 Newton. Distance is reduced to the extra rotation. So we can easily calculate the torque. Then another definition of the torque is I times alpha. From here we can calculate what moment inertia is. So then 47 Newton is the torque. So, so force applied on the wheel. 0.1 is the Distance to the extra rotation, which is the radius. We will find what I is. We know what angle of acceleration is. So then, by using this uh, multiplication uh, equation, you can calculate what I is. It's 0.24 kilogram meter squared. So part C, the angular speed of the wheel two seconds after it begins. Question number 39. It says, the combination of an applied force and a frictional force, so there are two forces acting on an object, there is one of them is a force is applied, the other one is frictional force, produce a constant torque of 36 newton meters. So this 36 newton meter is the net torque because of the applied force and frictional force, but which we don't know how much is from the frictional force, how much is from the applied force. So on a wheel rotating about a fixed axis. The applied force acts 6 seconds during which time the angular speed of the wheel increases from 0 to 12 radian per second. The applied force is then removed and the wheel comes to rest in 65 seconds. Answer the following questions. So what is the moment inertia of the wheel? So in net torque is given as 36 newton per meter. This is the, um, the net torque because of the applied force and frictional force. Uh, together, all together, they act on the object for 6 seconds and increases the angular speed by 12 radian per second. So calculate the moment inertia of the wheel. So to calculate the moment inertia of the wheel, we, uh, pardon, what is the moment inertia of the wheel? Yes, we need to, to use to, uh, this equation. Torque is equal to I times alpha because we know what torque is. It is given as 36 Newton. We can calculate alpha because we know how much is the change in angular speed. Even we know the uh, time, it is the 6 second. So then we can calculate what moment inertia of the bicycle tire is. Torque divided by alpha. First calculate alpha, delta omega over delta t. So angular speed is increasing from 0 to 12. So it is positive, positive 12. Divided by time uh, is 6 second because it's given during the 6 second. So 12 divided by 6 is equal to 2 radian per second squared is the angular acceleration of the bicycle wheel when there, uh, there are applied force and frictional force uh, acting on the uh, object of the wheel. So now uh, torque is 36. So I'll write it here, 36. So angular acceleration is 2. So 36 divided by 2, which is the 18 kilogram meter second. This is the moment of inertia of this bicycle. This information is important because we are going to use this information for answering the part B. 18 kilogram meter squared is the uh, moment of inertia of the bicycle. Now, question says that in part B, so what is the frictional torque? 
because we know that when the applied force is removed, only force acting on the object is the frictional force, so it produces torque. In how many seconds the object comes to rest? In 65 seconds, it comes to rest. In question, it's going like this. Uh, coming to rest means from 12 radian per second, it goes to zero. So change in angular speed in this case is negative because it's slowing down from 12 to zero. So can we calculate the torque? Yes, we can. We are going to do the same thing. We will, first, we will calculate what, is the, why, what the angle of acceleration is. Delta omega over delta t. Delta omega is this time is minus 12. Delta t is total at the time, uh, 65 seconds. So this is the negative 0.18 radian per second square. This negative sign indicates that the uh, will is slowing down. Then to calculate the torque of the force of friction, you just use I times alpha. We just calculate in I, I in the uh, part A, which is 18. So alpha is 0.18. When you multiply them, you are going to calculate a torque, which is negative 3.3 newton meters. Because it's negative, it's, this negative torque slows down the wheel. Now, how many revolutions does the wheel make during entire 71 time, second time interval? Why 71? Initially, 6 second accelerating, later 65 second uh, deceleration. Now, first calculate the acceleration part. So in the acceleration part, uh, which takes 6 seconds, angular speed increases from 0 to 12. So initial angle, initial 0, final is 12. So we can use this equation, initial is 0, final is 12, initial is 0, final is 12, 1 over 2, multiplied by 6, 36 radian is the angular displacement when the wheel is accelerating. Later, the wheel starts to decelerate. So initial uh, speed, in this case 12, final is 0 because it stops. Time is 65 seconds in the second time, only force of friction is acting on the wheel in this uh, interval. So then angular displacement is 390 radian. So it asks total, total, to calculate the total we should add them, 36 plus 390, which becomes uh, 490. 26 radian. This is the radian, but it asks how many revolutions. We should convert this radian to revolution by dividing 6.28. If we divide them, we will get the result as uh, 68 revolutions. Next question is question number 40. It says a cable pass over a pulley. As you see, this is a pulley. A cable is passed over it. Because of friction, the force in the cables is not the same on opposite sides of the pulley. Yeah, and on the right, if it is 100, on the other side, it's not 100, it's 120. These numbers are given. The force on one side is 120, not important which side is. I choose this side as 120. The force on the other side is 100 Newton. Assuming that the pulley is uniform, this with a mass of 21 kilogram and a radius, Question is asking, calculate the net torque acting on the wheel. So to calculate the net torque, not so difficult because we know what forces are. We also know what is the distance for each force. So this is the distance to the axis of rotation for each of them. So if one of them produces a positive torque, the other one produces a negative, produce a negative torque. So I say this one produces a positive torque because it tries to rotate in counterclockwise. This produces a negative torque try to rotate clockwise. So then calculate the torque one, F1 times R. R is the distance at the same time radius. Torque is negative F2 times R. So add them and calculate the net torque. Positive F1 R, negative F2 R. So R parenthesis F1 minus F2. F1 is 120, F2 is 100. Multiplied by radius of the uh, this uh, wheel is given as uh, somewhere as 0.81. So uh, you multiply them and you get the net torque as 16.2 Newton times meter. So this is the tor net torque. In the next part, it asks uh, to calculate the angular acceleration. Uh, because we know net torque, we can use this equation for calculating angular acceleration. Torque is equal to I times alpha, alpha is equal to torque divided by I. Because it's a disk, disk has a moment ratio 1 over 2 m r squared. First, we should calculate the moment ratio of the disk, 1 over 2 m r squared. So it is 0 0.37. 
Now it is easy to calculate the angular equation because torque net is, we know, we just calculated before. So we know what I is, just substitute them. 16.2 is the torque divided by moon inertia, which is 0.27. You are going to get the angular acceleration of the this uh, wheel or pulley as 43.8 radian per second. Question number 11, it's extended response page uh, 59. It's a, a very uh, advanced question. A 4 kilogram mass is at connected by a light cord of 3 kilogram mass on a smooth surface as shown in figure. This is the figure. One of the masses on the, incline, on the uh, surface and the other one is suspended by a thread. The pulley rotates about a frictionless axle, so this is the pulley, it can, it can rotate about a frictionless axis and it has a moment inertia 0 0.50 kilogram meter square and a radius of 0 0.3. So, moment inertia is 0 0.5, radius of the pulley is 0 0.3. Assuming that the cord does not slip on the pulley, answer the following question. What is the acceleration of two masses? What are the forces in the string F1 and F2? Alright, so in the question, these are given. Mass of the one of the one of the object is four kilogram. The other one is three kilogram. Greater one is four. This is four kilogram. This is four kilogram. This one is three kilogram. So to first cal to calculate to calculate the uh, acceleration, so we should use eleven class title. Newton's second law of motion. Also, we are going to use the uh, 12 class title, which is the net torque is equal to I times alpha. So, we are going to get three equations, and from these equations, we are going to calculate the uh, acceleration and forces. Now, we should study the objects one by one. For the object with mass m, now, first, let's study this big object. Downward force is its weight, Fg. Upward force is the F1. F1 is pulling this object upward. But it has, it's, if it is action, there must be its pair on the pulley, F1 downward. If F2 is acting on object small m, its pair is again acting on the pulley as F2. So these are also action reaction pairs. So now, first let's apply the uh, second law of motion for uh, big M. Big M, uh, this object is uh, accelerating down. For that reason, Fg must be greater than F1. So, net force is Fg minus F1 is equal to mass times acceleration of the this block, this object. So, Fg is the weight. 40 kilogram object is 4 times 9.81, which is 39 Newton. Minus F1, because in the opposite direction of acceleration, is equal to mass times acceleration. Mass is 4, 4 times acceleration. Then from here, we can get F1 as 39 minus 4 a, 48 80 tangential acceleration. So we can just say A2. It's not so important. F1 is equal to 39 minus 4 a. Two unknowns, so we cannot get F1. We cannot get A. So we are going to now use the second law of motion for the small object, small object mass. So this object is pulled by only one force, which is F2. So F2 is the only force in the direction of the acceleration acting on the object. Because they are connected to each other, both objects will have the same acceleration, A and A. So mass times acceleration. Mass is 3 kg for this object, so F2 is equal to 3A. So this is also to unknown, so we cannot also solve this question. We need a third equation. Third equation will come from the Newton's second law for rotation. Net torque acting in the object is equal to I times alpha. So net torque can be calculated because F1 tried to rotate in clockwise, F2 counterclockwise. So uh, F1 produces a torque F1R, F2 produces F2R, but they are in opposite direction, these torques. So then, uh, which is equal to I times alpha. If in the R parenthesis it becomes F1 minus F2 times R, so alpha is equal to tangential acceleration divided by R we know, then tangential acceleration divided by R. Then uh, we can simply get this R to the other side and make it R squared. Fm minus F2 is equal to I times A divided by R squared. 
Now we know what f1 is. Let's get this f1 here. f2 from here to there. Let's substitute them. f1 is 39 minus 4a. 39 minus 4a. f2 is 3a. It is the 3a is equal to what is moment inertia? It is given as 0 0.5. 0 0.5. A is unknown divided by what is R? R is 0 0.3. 0 0.3 squared. Now just one unknown left. A. So for minus 4a minus 3a, it becomes minus 7a. So this is this division makes 5.6 times a. Just one a. Get now this a to the other side. 7 plus 5.6 it becomes 12.6 a which is equal to 39 so then a is equal to 3.1 meter per second squared this is the acceleration after calculating the acceleration of the object it is easy to calculate f just substitute a here 39 minus 4 a 4 times 3.1 so f1 becomes 26.6 for f2 just substitute here a acceleration is to 3.1 3 times 3.1 which is 9.3 uh, Newton, it is the F2, so we'll finish the extent response question.